On March 23rd, the Audubon Society of Northern Virginia posted an open letter to the government of Fairfax County on the McLean Patch website. The purpose of the letter was to raise public awareness about the county's intentions to spray Bacillus thuringiensis, a spray commonly referred to as Bt pesticide, in selected areas in the county to try to reduce the populations of canker worms. The Audubon Society is worried that because songbirds migrate at the same time as canker worms hatch, the loss of canker worms as a food source would have a serious impact on the population of songbirds. The county limited the number of areas where they sprayed in late April, but the Audubon Society is concerned that it was not enough. We spoke to Ms. Glenda Booth, the president of the Friends of Dyke Marsh, a group that had similar concerns as the Audubon Society. Linda Booth, part of the Audubon Society of Northern Virginia. I live in the Mount Vernon area of Fairfax County. Friends of Dyke Marsh is a, a local group that works to preserve and restore Dyke Marsh, which is a rare freshwater tidal wetland on the Virginia side of the Potomac River. The county has four options in the future. One, continue any projects as planned without making any changes. Two, limit the spraying. Three, use an alternative method to prevent the impact on the environment. Or four, completely cancel any future project. A cankerworm is also known as an inchworm. It is a type of caterpillar found in most of North America. It is a native insect, but it is also a pest. Cankerworms defoliate trees, meaning they cause a loss in leaves. While cankerworms devour all sorts of trees, their favorites are maple, oak, and hickory. All of these trees are common throughout Fairfax County. When the infestation of cankerworms is severe, they can cause a huge loss in tree leaves which stresses or sometimes kills the trees. According to data from the Fairfax County government, over 5,000 acres of land have been defoliated by cankerworms. This poses a major problem to trees. However, as the Audubon Society points out, songbirds are natural cankerworm predators. Surely the birds should take care of the cankerworms themselves, right? We asked Ms. Booth about this. So the timing of the spraying was very disturbing to many Auduboners and members of the Friends of Dyke Marsh because the county sprayed right at the time when many warblers and other birds were migrating through the area. And caterpillars are a major food source for these migrating birds. Some of our members were really up in arms about it. The county was actually killing the food source for many birds. It is clear there are two opposing opinions. The county believes the cankerworm population is out of control this year, especially in those select areas. On the other hand, the Audubon Society and Friends of Dyke Marsh believe that the songbirds can contain the cankerworm threat. Bt pesticide is the chemical that the county uses to spray the cankerworms. But what exactly is Bt pesticide and what are the potential threats? While the chemical process for creating the pesticide is confidential information because multiple companies create their own version of it, the background of Bt pesticide can be discussed. Some of the more popular brands include Abel, Biobit, Cutlass, Dipole, Foray, Javelin, Thuricide, and Vectobac. Bt pesticide starts as a bacteria found in the soil. It is rod-shaped and can move and form spores. The actual pesticide can be directly applied on plants. Another way Bt pesticide can be used is by introducing the bacteria genes into a plant species. The tissues of the plants will then create their own proteins that contain Bt, which then they can use to protect themselves from pests. The county sprayed Bt most recently in 1999, then 2003, and now in 2013. They want to be sure that they don't spray too often because otherwise the insects can become immune to the pesticide. For example, Heavy use of Bt created populations of insects that were resistant to the pesticide, the diamondback moths in Hawaii and the potato beetles in Florida and New York. When sprayed, the pesticide generally stays in the ground for up to 21 days. So they identified these areas and they, using a U.S. Forest Service measure, they determined that the population levels were very high. So in April, they did broadcast spraying from helicopters in these designated areas, many of which were near here where we're standing today. The county sprayed Bt pesticide around the county in certain zones between April 22nd and April 23rd this year. So what is done is done. The spraying cannot be reversed. But some questions remain. For example, in 1999, Troy Shaw, the coordinator of Fairfax County's Forest Pest Management Program, said this about the spring. Our guess is that this will take care of it as a reoccurring problem and we won't have to spray again. 
This prediction was obviously wrong. Four years later, the county sprayed, and now they did it once again, ten years later. Obviously, predictions do go wrong sometimes, but the county does not have answers as to why they were wrong in 1999. Each year the county has sprayed, they have believed that the cankerworm population was too large for the birds to control, especially with the decline of the bird population over the last few years. Did they make the right decision? Ms. Booth had this to say. Some of the foresters say that it takes two or three years of serious defoliation before a tree is actually killed. So what about alternatives? While Bt replaced a far more dangerous chemical, it does nothing to prevent a decline in bird populations. According to Ms. Booth, the Audubon Society is working on alternatives. We are having conversations with some entomologists. We would like to work with the county to try to find another approach that is not so destructive to caterpillars. I don't know what that approach is. We know that individual homeowners could ban their own trees in the fall when the caterpillars emerge from the ground and perhaps uh, deal with them on their own property. While nothing is definitive yet, the Audubon Society is concerned about the effects of the BT spray, and they want to make sure a spray can protect trees and birds at the same time. In the meantime, people living in the spray areas can request to opt out of the spraying in the future. For example, Dyke Marsh, along with all of the other national parks, opted out of this year's spraying. Curious, we visited the Safeway store near Dyke Marsh and asked 25 random people if they knew about the sprayings and whether they had opted out of the sprayings. Out of the 12 that were affected by the sprayings, one opted out. Out of the 25 people surveyed, 7 were aware of the issue, but 19 said they would care deeply if the songbird population was decreased. Obviously, the Audubon Society has not done enough to raise awareness about the sprayings. In the end, we were surprised that both sides appear not to have done enough research. The county hasn't really looked into the negative side effects of BT and built a strong enough case to demonstrate that there will be excessive defoliation that will disrupt the ecosystem. The Audubon Society wants to save trees from cankerworms and protect the songbirds, yet they have not put forth a viable alternative. We suggest that the following inquiries be made by both the Audubon Society and the Fairfax County government. First, the Fairfax County government, backed by scientific studies, needs to justify to the public their BT pesticide spraying program, which began in 1999, and, in particular, why they cannot rely on nature to regulate the situation. A cankerworm population has a five to seven year cycle, Thus, while there are spikes, there should also be natural decreases. As a result, the Fairfax County government should explain why there was no need to spray pesticides between 2003 and 2013, even though outbreaks should have occurred within this 10-year period. Both sides could help further scientific research to establish clearer conclusions, such as whether the warmer weather, due to climate change, greatly exacerbates the cankerworm population spikes as well as whether Dutch elm disease places trees at a greater risk of death through defoliation. We believe that both the county government and the Audubon Society should examine the situation of Southern County, Maryland, where no BT pesticides were sprayed. Why didn't Southern County, Maryland have to resort to such tactics? And can something be learned from their experience? By studying results from other jurisdictions, the society could potentially justify to the county that pesticides do not need to be sprayed because nature will self-regulate. Finally, the Audubon Society should consider taking a wider viewpoint on the issue. While songbirds are cankerworm predators, cankerworms have other predators such as wasps, which would also be affected by a decrease in cankerworm population. It might also be worthwhile for the Audubon Society and the county to look at other ways to combat defoliation, such as fertilization, tree bands, and mulching. In conclusion, compelling scientific research, if shared by both the Audubon Society and the Fairfax County government, combined with an attitude shift, could produce a solution to this local environmental challenge agreeable to officials and bird watchers alike.